In this video, we'll discuss the SSD 1306 OLED display. Let's take a look at it. It's a really tiny OLED display. OLED means that uh, every pixel is an individual LED that turns on and off. So the blue uh, light that you see there, that's a little organic LED, and the black is an LED that's not turned on. This entire screen is something like 0.93 inches in diagonal, it's really tiny, and it has 128 pixels horizontally and 32 pixels vertically. It uses I2C communication, so it has an SDA and an SCL pin, and it takes 3.3 volts in ground. The pull-up resistors for I2C are built onto the board. Um, I have another set for a different I2C chip, um, so I've kind of doubled up here, but that's not necessary because they're built onto the board. And that's all the connections you need. Everything else is going to be code. Uh, what I2C data do you send to this screen to make it update? And then how fast can you make it do that? Because with every screen you use, the question is, um, how long does it take to fill up all those pixels? And is that going to slow down your code? And in this case, um, I'm updating every single pixel as fast as possible. And it's able to do that at 73 frames per second. So that's pretty fast. So let's look at the specs for this particular board that I purchased. Uh, it's 128 by 32 pixels. And um, basically it's monochrome. The pixels are either on or off. Let's compare that versus a traditional display, which is a TFT display. A TFT display is probably what you're looking at right now, uh, a phone screen or a computer screen. And a TFT screen is every pixel is a uh, semi-transparent color and then a backlight behind it. So the backlight is white, pushes light through these three little screens. Um, and if you turn all three off, you see white. Um, and if you block all three, you see black. And if you block only red, but not the blue and green, you see red. And you get to fade each one. So TFT is usually color. RGB and um, different amounts of bits, but usually eight bits each. So if uh, we're talking about how much memory it takes uh, to display an image, if we had 128 uh, by 32 pixels times eight bits each, that's a lot of pixels you need to remember. Whereas on a monochrome OLED display, 128 by 32 pixels stored then into bytes is 512 bytes of data to store every single pixel. Um, something like 128 by 32 by three bytes per pixel uh, is something huge, like 12,000 bytes of data to store that image. And this isn't even a very high resolution screen. There's just not a whole lot of pixels here. So a traditional TFT screen that does full color usually takes an enormous amount of memory. And that also means to update the screen, it takes a lot of time because you have to update every single one of those pixel values. On this OLED screen, there's not really that many bits to set. So it doesn't take that long to do it. Now, usually TFT screens use SPI communication because in SPI, uh, we have a dedicated data outline and we can up the baud to something really, really fast, like 20 megahertz. In this case though, the SSD 1306 breakout, um, while the SSD 1306 can talk SPI, this particular board uses I2C to reduce the number of pins, but we're also limited to something like 400 kilohertz. So the downside of this board, relatively low resolution, stuck using I2C, which means uh, slow communication, but because we're monochrome, there's not really that many bytes to send, so at 400 kilohertz, we can update the screen very often. We also don't get color, but that's okay. We're just trying to show some text. So what is this screen capable of doing? Well, you can really just tell, turn pixels on and off. Let's take a look at some code. I'm providing uh, a C and H file uh, for the SSD 1306. So how do we initialize the screen? Um, and then uh, what are the functions that will let us turn pixels on and off? So here's the H file. And there are lots of registers in this particular driver. So technically the SSD 1306 is a driver, a chip that's built onto the glass that has all the pixels. 
Uh, and sometimes that driver can drive a 128 by 64 or 128 by 128 or different size screens. So this particular board happens to be uh, 128 by 32, but we'll look at the data sheet and you'll see that it also references other pixel sizes. And so these are all of the registers that you would need to change when you turn on the chip so that we tell it exactly what power it's plugged into, how to arrange its internal memory, uh, how to set the brightness, and things like that. And there are more registers than this. These just seem to be the, the bare minimum that you need to set to make this work. I actually took a look at the example code for Adafruit and SparkFun libraries for this board um, and kind of recobbled them together to figure out what we had to actually turn on to make this thing work. So we're providing um, a setup function that's like the initialization, a draw pixel function which takes the position in X and Y for the pixel you want to turn on and whether it should be on and off. What that's doing is actually just changing a variable inside of the pick. When you want to show what the screen should display, you call the update function. So first you call draw pixel that sets a bit inside of the pick, and then update sends all of the bits to update the screen. Clear is um, essentially the same thing as draw pixel, except it just zeroes out every single bit. So clear would delete whatever you've got on the screen, um, and then clear and then update would actually show that you've deleted those pixels. Internally, these functions all are using the SSD1306 command function. That's the low-level uh, I2C write function. Uh, I'm making it available here just in case you want to try some of the cooler things. There's a scroll mode and things like that available for this that I didn't write code for. So if we look at the C file, um, the clear function uses the function memset to delete all the pixels. That's from string.h, so I'm including that here. Here are the addresses for the read and write um, uh, I2C calls. So this particular board has this seven bit address. Um, you may, if you have a different brand of this board, um, this bit, uh, the last bit is sometimes a one. So it just depends how the board was manufactured if they made a pin high or low. And then the write always ends in a zero and the read always ends in a one. And then here is my giant character array that represents every pixel. So um, this is an array of, of chars, and every char is 8 bits, and every bit in there represents one of the pixels on the screen. So 128 times 32 uh, pixels uh, divided by 8 tells us how many bytes we need, and that is 512. So here's the initialization function. Um, I found that when you first power up the board, uh, it needs a little time to settle. So I put a small delay in here so that we don't immediately start talking. Uh, we give it a little time to settle. And then we call all of these registers and values that kind of turn on the, uh, the display to get it ready to talk to. And then I clear out my memory and update it so all the pixels are off. One thing that might happen is when you turn on this chip, you might see what they call a star field, just a random display of dots on, um, on the screen. That would mean that this initialization did not really occur because it didn't turn on with the right settings and didn't clear the update. So uh, that would mean check your wires and uh, the, the clock settings and things like that. This is the command function, the update function, the draw pixel function, and the clear function. None of these are needed to be changed. Um, and they do reference the I2C uh, no int code uh, to get the I2C commands. Let's take a quick look at the data sheet. So this is the data sheet for the SSD 1306. And even on the front page, they say it's a 128 by 64 dot matrix driver. So this particular board happens to be 128 by 32. That just means that this uh, board is capable of driving other types of screens. There's not really a whole lot to look at here. Um, what is uh, neat is that there are actually many interfaces to this particular device. Uh, the board that I happened to buy only soldered it in such a way that it can talk I2C. It's actually capable of talking a different kind of uh, SPI and parallel communication, which might get like faster throughput, uh, but they use more pins. So the I2C version um, uses the least amount of pins, but is the slowest communication. The only real downside to this chip, when we go back and look at it, is that there's no reset pin. So just like in any other uh, I2C code, you probably want some kind of heartbeat going on an LED so that you can tell um, that your 
pick code is frozen because when the pick tries to talk to this device, and it's going to be talking to it quite often, if the pick stops talking to it in the middle of a transaction to say program itself, and then it wakes up and it starts talking to this again, this one, the SSD1306, might be expecting to finish the previous transaction and then the pick won't because it didn't know that that was happening and then it freezes and then nothing updates anymore. So without the reset pin on here to be able to physically reset this, the only way to restart the communication is to kill the power to the board. Hopefully that doesn't happen too much. I didn't find it happened too many times. So it's a neat little board. Um, if we think about how the pixels are arranged, we've got our pins over here and we've got this grid of pixels. This pixel here is at location uh, zero comma zero. So when we talk about X comma Y, when you're turning the pixels on and off with the draw pixel function, um, that is the location zero zero. So it goes uh, positive in that direction and positive in this direction. So the first thing you should try when you get this board uh, plug it into power and ground, plug it into the I2C pins, um, initialize I2C, initialize the SSD1306, and then uh, draw one of the pixels on, do a little delay, draw the pixel off, do a delay, and just see if it blinks. Once you've done that, we can discuss how to make it a little more useful. How do we get text to appear on the screen?